You're coming da, this way? Da, 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 I thought I'd just follow you into this one. Coming this way. I don't feel normal beside this alien. I know. We'll switch it up. This feels awesome. I'll go, you smell um, good. Huh? You smell good. Do they smell good? You do. ba da 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 I know I uh, don't smell like stinky minor head. I uh, I cleaned up cleaned up my act. <coughs> cleaned up my act. Well, cheers. Cheers and welcome to the bar. Welcome to the bar. It's very On this explosive start. To this uh, like, where did you find this thing? This hat has been around for a bit, and uh, if you set it up right. It does all kinds of amazement for protecting your ears. Like, you can't hear anything with these things. Okay, but where did you get the hat from? It was under the uh, the stairs in the uh, area with all the different kind of equipment and stuff that's in there. So it was in the house when we got here? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Yeah. It's a relic. It's a classic, and it protects your ears from all of the loud noises if you're working with does mining equipment. Work? or Oh, yeah, the light works. <gasps> The light works good. Huh. It's a sick hat. It is a sick hat. If you're working with mining equipment or loud things, you just muffle these in. And... Yeah, those are the same headphones we have for the <coughs> rock polishing. Yeah, any kind of rock polishing you're doing, whatever. Yep. Yep. It uh, covers it and muffles it so it's not too loud. So did you just accidentally stumble upon this relic? Or did you know it was there for a long time? No, I had known it was there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was just kind of hanging out. And uh, I figured I'd take it for a rip. Because it's... Uh, if you're wearing this, you're hard at work. So, you know, it's uh, it's uh, definitely symbolizes working around loud equipment. Loud stuff. And it's very loud around here. Ah, all those noises... Ah, the noises are loud! It's actually definitely incredibly quiet in this room. It is. Because I'm wearing this hat. That's why. It doesn't, like... This thing looks so MacGyvered. Like, but it's not, though. Huh. No, it's a nice setup. Energizer. It's got all the muffling there. It's got to tighten it a little bit. But if you tighten it to the right setup, man, you're good to go. I know you want one. You want to wear this one? You want to try it on? I've worn one before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you wear these for the polishing of the rocks. Uh, no, but I meant, like, the whole thing. The hat, too, for protective? Not with rock polishing, no, but in Alberta, when I went and did a coal mine oh, uh, yeah. tour, we had yeah. to wear hard hats. Because the mine yeah. was falling apart. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're if you're inside tight rock formations and you never know, then it's good to throw one of these. But see, coal mines on. are weird because you know how most mines go down? Mm -hmm. Coal mines go up. Yeah. You mine upwards. <clears throat> yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's a totally different setup in the coal mines. It's so trippy though, because you're like, you're you're walking through, right, and. If you're underground, mm -hmm. so like your brain thinks you're deep, and then you come out of the shaft or whatever, and you're on top of this huge mountain. And just, you're like, uh, yeah, you're looking down because they just blew it straight out. Yeah. Yeah, because you're inside the mountain, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, dude. It's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. That's what they got going on here, too. You think you're underground, but then you come out on the side of the mountain because they kind of put it inside the mountain, right? Where's that? At DE. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. They got uh, that tour there. But it's not quite the same because, like, <clears throat> for nickel, you still mine downwards. Yeah, but I'm just saying as far as an example of, like, Something what similar. what's close by yeah. for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something close by for us. But, yeah, if you're mining, you definitely, you know, got to have this set up on, protect the noggin. Protect your noggin. <clears throat> yeah. Also, if you're uh, driving around in this day and age, very encouraged to have a hard hat on. Yeah. 
Extra safety, man. Extra, Extra safety. safety. If you're out golfing, it can protect you against balls. Want to protect my face too much. <laughs> yeah, when you got hit in the head with a golf club. Yep. Ooh. Hit in the face, not Ooh. the head, the face. Ooh. I'm still shocked. You were standing a little too close to that person, that who nice. thankfully wasn't me. No, because you probably would have broke my face. Yeah, I'm happy, but I'm kind of like relieved that you panned out okay from that. Because when you told me that, I was like... I am so surprised that... <clears throat> if you would have been wearing this, we'd have been fine. No, it still would have hit me in the face. Because mm, okay. it hit me right there. Oh. <laughs> Fair. Okay. That's yeah. Fair. I'm still surprised that I didn't like... Fall but you got an official face. concussion, though. Mm-hmm. Was, so you became it was a good officially time. concussed. It was not a good time. From an injury. Life. It was not a good time. It was not. No. No. Well, we hung out a lot inside of a basement because that's all you could do. That I barely remember. Yeah. Because you, you were advised to literally not do too much of anything for your concussion. It was like, you do, your doctor basically said, like, try not to function for a while. Yeah, which for me doesn't work very well. Yeah. Limit yourself to just... I'm a functioning person. Limit yourself to watching that favorite series or something, you know, whatever you want you want to watch. But, but then don't watch it for too long because then you might get, like, too, you know... But yeah. concussions suck, needless to say. They do suck. If you can avoid them, avoid them. Avoid concussions at all costs. Do not attempt to endure yourself a concussion. No. Because if you're wearing the this all day, every day, you would probably have a less chance of having a concussion. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're doing anything semi-dangerous, um, even if you're out for a wild Saturday night on the town, just wear one of these. You'll be fine. In the city, you could wear that, and it would probably just be completely mm. normal. That's what I'm saying. Go out for a Saturday night on the town. You wear much of this, and you think no more of Inco, and you're good to go. <laughs> That's a joke that maybe a few people might get. <laughs> you could think no more of Inco and wear this. On a good old Sudbury Saturday night. Hey. Where are you at? Where are you at? What you gonna do? Have you what ever you been in a mine? Um, aside from a fake one? No. Or the ones that go into the mountains? No, I have never been down a mine shaft very deep. No. You? Yes. <clears throat> Where'd you go? I went, well, I went to, well, there was a coal mine, but that was up. Mm -hmm, in Elliot right. Lake, there was one. I've never been like super deep. I haven't mine. been super deep. Like in a mine shaft. Um, uh, this wasn't a mine. It was a cave. Mm. But we went deep. I don't remember how deep. Fair. But deep enough. And you guys were way down there in the depths of the the rocky underground beds. Did you have a pickaxe? Were you swinging? Not when I went into the cave, no. No? Mm -mm. I've used a pickaxe, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're fun. Mm -hmm. For when you're searching for gold or silver. How deep do you think you went down? I have no idea. That was in Elliot Lake? Uh, in Elliot Lake, we kind of just like went down a little bit. Huh. There's, there was like this weird station. I don't know. I, like I was really young. I barely remember it. Fair. And then, uh, where was I when I went to the cave? Was that Montana? Maybe. Uh, it was either Montana or Old Butter. One of the two. Uh, yeah. There, I don't remember how deep we went either. But mm. it must have been deep enough because there were stalactites and stalactites. Fair. And. Uh, stalactites and stalagmites there we go and like uh those like pools of water that are so clean and clear that they look Ooh, like like they're not even there yeah yeah, yeah yeah and you look like you can drink from them but you probably don't want to they don't even look like they're there it's really bizarre yeah like because there's no there's no airflow hmm. like there's no wind 
There's no dripping. There's yeah. no dirt. Oh, yeah. There's no dust. And they're just like super clear, super yeah, clear. Yeah, it looks like glass. Yeah, It's dude. wild. Because there's no, like you say, there's no wind, so you don't get any sort uh-huh. of ripples or anything, and it's just like a clear sheet. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, I haven't uh, ventured too deep down into any... Um, you know, mine shafts or anything like that. It's never been something that I've uh, I've done. Would you want but, to? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> maybe. <sighs> yeah. A bit. What creeps you out a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, hats off to the people who do mining because it's not something that I would personally pursue to do a lot. But I mean, uh, I could understand, you know, the depths of being down there. But I don't know if that's something that I would like to do a lot of. Maybe to go on like a tour or something. But it's an to be an actual miner that's down there all the time is, you know. Well, that's uh, that's two different things. I don't think I could be a miner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like but. it's different world down there, man. Mm-hmm. It's it a is. different world down and in those mines. It's you have to be a different person. Like yeah. I guess it's like that with anything, but you have to. The be... people that do it, I mean, you know, they're they're hacking it. They're down there a lot. Like you know, if you know a miner, yeah. they're a miner. That's like, what it's I'm just, saying. That's, yeah. that's who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, like you know, you're always trying to do your safest work down there, but you're down there and you're you're getting it done. And you know, you're doing a lot of dangerous stuff, explosives, and you're dealing with all kinds of different scenarios, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's definitely a gig for sure when you're hacking away down there. It's hard work, man. It is. It's hard work. I mean, even with automation and a few of the upgrades we have in technology, you're still still hard work. You're down there. You're figuring all kinds of stuff out, you know? I think what's good is that they don't, uh, like, because we've advanced science and technology, <clears throat> our poor miners now aren't being pumped full of random chemicals. Well, the breathing situations, hopefully, you know, they're better than they were anyway. They have to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, safety is always everyone's number one thing when you're mining, right? So, yeah, like as far as breathing stuff goes. But uh, I don't know. Like, it's, uh, it's cool to understand how it works and how it functions and to go down there and get more knowledge about it. You know, it's pretty interesting. It's... And you can you can read about it and look at stuff a bit, but it's like anything else. If you're not there you firsthand, if you're not there firsthand, Even, you know? like especially the old days, because miners used to have to be really small. Yeah, because fair. you're mm. mining, right? Mm. And you would go down not in elevators. You would go down mm. in like buckets and shit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I remember when I went to that coal mine. And you kind of go through, like when you put on your hard hat and all that stuff, you go through the same sort of routine that the men went through, which yeah. I thought was really cool. And they bring you into the, like, shower area. Ooh, the shower area. But it Getting wasn't like clean. a shower. Getting it, clean. It, it was more like they would pump, like, different gases and oh, shit. yeah. Yeah. To- protect the lungs right oh but it's weird because they still have some of the stuff hanging from the ceilings where when they would come up from underground yeah they would hang their suits because they would be soaking wet Mm -hmm. and it's just it's creepy to see the old hooks and like yeah yeah i know the old like overalls and stuff like covered it's uh it's you know it's wild to think that so many people were involved in that and that was what almost like everybody did at one point, especially in this city. Yeah, this city was huge. Everybody mining. was just a, like a miner working for the mines, yeah. you know, getting nickel and whatever else. Well, nickel was huge for space exploration. I mean, this is the, we're still the biggest place that they get nickel from, uh-huh. you know, around to this day to mm-hmm. right now. You know, like nickel is still huge. Well, the same there's thing. still tons to get. Like there's still. A is lot. there? Are we still rich in nickel? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Huh. It's pretty, yeah, it's still pretty good. Because I I think Elliot Lake's uranium 
got really depleted. I don't know if it's... Yeah, I'm not too sure on percent of like yeah. that. But they went pretty hard on that. Well, because they, again, were using it for things like space exploration yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like... I think they were also using it for some type of weaponry. Yeah. I think uranium. Yeah. And it, like, Alia Lake's story is so weird because if you look... <laughs> back at like old pictures mm -hmm. from the mining days when they were mining uranium like that it was a huge city yeah it was tons and tons of people and then as soon as they stopped needing the uranium everything just went to shit <laughs> yeah no it's true and like true. now i think all of the i don't think you can go into any of the mines anymore i think they're all yeah well that's kind of the thing with collapsing. like uh if you look at mines and like if you look at that over time and history and stuff it's like once if they figure out an area is done whether it's gold or uranium or whatever they move on right and then nobody's gonna stick around if there's none left well yeah one or two so things moves is gonna around, happen right? either that or your <clears throat> scaffolding and shit is gonna start to crumble yeah you gotta maintain it all right gotta have that maintenance level maintenance gotta have the the mining maintenance at its peaks maintenance but yeah i mean there's Oops. a lot of uh i just remembered i forgot to do something today Oh, well, you can do it after. No, I can't. Oh, I can't do it after. It's no, done. I'll have to do it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> that was so random. I do this. I just, like, my brain will randomly think of something. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? Sometimes, man, it's like, you know, you have a few things that you feel like you should do, and then other other things, it's like, oh, tomorrow's another day. You know, you can only do so much in one day. It's true. It's like you do a little bit and then, you know, tomorrow is another day. Yep. Because you can't, you can't do too many things in one day. It's ridiculous. Yep. I learned that. Can't do it. Can't do it. Is this heavy? It. It's uh, a good size. I wouldn't say that it's light. I don't like but, these headphones. Uh, I find them really uncomfortable. Like the yeah. big sound canceling headphones. It's not like light, but it's not like super heavy either. It's kind of like medium, I guess. It's a little big for my head. It's a little big for my hard head. It's a little big for my hard head. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's like um, like we were recently, like you recently showed me about how there was bone wars. Bone wars. Bone wars, I man. Bone I didn't wars. know that they were actually called bone wars. Well, it's a nickname they got over time. I, no, I think the newspapers <laughs> gave it. The, the bone, bone wars. wars? Yeah, it was the newspapers. Once they started kind of reporting on all the stuff that was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that was a newspaper wars. thing. So in the history of peoples, there was these two peoples that were having serious bone wars. Bone warnage. That's wild. Warnage. warnage. Cope. Marsh. Cope. Marsh. Cope and Marsh. Are you team Cope or team Marsh? I don't know. I got her. I can't pick a team member. I, I'm too fresh on this news. You're too fresh. Yeah, I mean, I know it's past history. That's a while ago, but this is kind of like a fresh story for me. So I can't pick a team. It's hard without to pick a team. having more more info on Cope and Marsh Bone Wars. It's hard to pick a team. They were both trying to find dinosaurs, and then I don't know which one more blew up the fossils than the other one. But they decided. They both blew things. Yeah, up. they were just gonna start blowing things up so the other guy couldn't find it. Like, here's some cool fossils, we're just going to blow these up. I, I wonder, like, <laughs> how many skeletons got blown up. Yeah, just because they didn't want the other guy to find yeah, it. Yeah, like, just <sighs> careless crap. It's so, like... It's kind of petty. It's so petty. It's like they were they were doing so good in history, but they couldn't get along, so then they had to and you start think, blowing up fossils. Right? And, and you got to think, like... They were discovering some of, like, the biggest known dinosaurs now. You yeah. know, like, things like T-Rex and Triceratops. They and, were, like, one of the first people right? to so start like, finding that stuff. And a lot of people don't know, but we don't have, like, we'll just say T-Rex because everyone yeah, knows yeah, T-Rex. Yeah. We don't have a lot of T-Rex specimens. Like, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. there's, like, 20 or 25. And this is not complete skeletons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just from individuals oh for sure for sure yeah and that's but, uh, like nothing yeah, i know it's nothing know. 
Yeah. So it's like, how much of that was blown up? How much of that is in people's houses that we don't know? There's a lot, I think, more yeah. than you more than you know that are probably out there that are undocumented, unever told about, that are just hanging out in places. Yeah. There's got to be a lot. There's got to be. And if you look at the amount of people every time they're going for fossils. Yeah. There's got to be a And lot. if you grew up in those areas yeah, that yeah, yeah. had a lot of dinosaur fossils, a long time ago, they, they didn't understand the value of it mm -hmm. like okay for example when i was in montana one of the years um i was with paleontologist and we were going to prospect this one particular site because yeah. uh this woman had called the field station and said that there was a huge bone that looked like people were trying to steal it yeah um but it was it was massive like you you needed a crane to okay. get this thing out of there like you wouldn't be able to haul it with a couple of dudes you know yeah, yeah, like yeah, this thing is a thousand pounds or more mm -hmm. um so we go to this woman's house <laughs> and i shit you not she has a lampshade and on this lampshade glued are like teeth and claws nice and, like the paleontologist was looking around there was a few things like that yeah. and he's like do you realize what you have here? Like, do you even know what this is? But she was like, it's like the coolest thing he's ever seen. Like she was an old lady. Yeah, and she, yeah. Was like, she didn't really know. Like, she's like, I understand now. She was like, but when I was a little girl, like this was just shit I'd find in my backyard. That's so wild. Like this was a craft project. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> just find all these amazing things just right in her backyard. Depending, she obviously lived in an area where they were all over the yeah, place. Yeah, because we were going to her property, right? <sighs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. There's it's a like... lot of that. There's a lot of, you know, people that have little things. Some people probably don't even know what they have that's out there. But Cope and Marsh were digging. And they were inventing stuff, too, uh, towards the end. Because they wanted to find the most, right? Yeah. From what I understand. So mm -hmm. they just started kind of making some things up. To try Pretty to make much. it look like they found more, but it might be the same kind of dinosaur, but they would make it up to be a new one. Yeah. That's why I guess a lot of them got discredited, right, or something? From yeah, what I, I think they found 140 yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, yeah, now it's down to, I think... There's maybe 30 or uh, so. Oh, yeah. So that's how many that they that were kind left. of. Yeah, okay. Because okay. what happens is all this stuff gets kept in collections at museums. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it just sits there and collects dust until someone has the time or opportunity to go yeah, through well, it. to sort it all And reanalyze it. Yeah. So that's what started happening is these other scientists would go in and be like, oh, actually, this is no different from this. Yeah, yeah. It's actually just from a juvenile or something. A lot of that uh, okay, happens okay. a lot, where especially uh, with T. Rex and stuff. Yeah, this is just from like a younger one or whatever. Yeah, and that yeah. there's still a lot of those debates. Like you have uh, you have Gorgosaurus. Yeah. And then you have Albertosaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So scientists still can't agree whether or not Gorgosaurus is its own separate species, or if it's a juvenile Albertosaurus. <coughs> okay. Okay. That can happen with like subtle little differences between yeah. adults and juveniles. Okay, okay. Because juveniles yeah. tend to be like a little slimmer. They can move a little faster. They got a little bit smaller skulls. Makes Maybe sense. Maybe not as much ornamentation. Makes sense. Yeah, that's cool, man. But like, yeah, I'm just you know I'm so enthralled by what could have been found on I top know. of what they already found. But because they had to start blowing things up, you know, I think, like, as much as the stuff that they did find in the document is amazing, out of this story, what stuck out to me the most is the fact that they started blowing up all these other fossils. You know, when you, when you look back on history, and then you look back on all the people that are doing that right now, they're probably sitting there just like, man, you know, what would have been there? You right? know, what, what got missed? I you know. know. What I got know. missed? They could have been documented from that just for section. Petty that just became dust now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just dust in the wind. Mm -hmm. Like, here's a good area with a lot of stuff and then dust, you know? Yeah. Like, just, legit dust. That's what I mean. They were using dynamite to blow yeah. it up. So you turn 
history into dust. You literally just went and you just dusted this part. Like, I just sat there when I heard about that. I was like, people, come on. Right? But at the time, they were so just into this battle. There's people battling each other that they forgot about what they were actually, like, doing. I know. Was trying to find fossils. And, like... But they got so into the rivalry... I can't help... they just started blowing it up. I can't help but feel bad for Coke. And (laughs) it's it's funny because... Like... That's so nuts. Rivalries. Yeah, I, I feel bad for Cope because even though he came from a rich family and he didn't really have to work as hard as Marsh did, Yeah. I feel like Marsh was a bigger asshole. Okay. Like, okay. the whole thing with the elasmosaur and how Cope put the head on the wrong end. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. And then Cope's... Uh, mentor or whatever told marsh like oh i think he put that in the wrong place and then marsh basically just went hee 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 you fucked up hee 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 you <laughs> yeah, fucked up yeah, 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 yeah. and then that's when cope started freaking out yeah, right yeah, yeah. and just being like oh my god and then he started trying to prove himself yeah, yeah, yeah. right and i i feel like if marsh wouldn't Snaps. have been an asshole like that and yeah. made fun of him it was just like Instead of being like, hey, dude, I think you fucked up. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Maybe that wouldn't have happened. No, I hear you. I hear you. But, like, I think, like, there's just so much rivalry that became, you know what I mean? And it's, like, two scientists going is. two scientists going at it. You know, the rivalry of, like, the... And, and it's, like, a, it's a weird kind of thing. And, and whether it's in that scenario or sports... Or whatever. There's always going to be human competition, rivalries. It's just human nature, Even right? Even when so, the best so, outcome yeah. could be to work together. That's exactly right? it. But instead of you know working together and hey, hey, maybe we should just get these fossils. One guy, one guy says, "You want them? No, I'm taking them. I'm taking them. I'm t-. Well, nobody's really? going to get them then, you know." And then, like, could you imagine what could have happened <laughs> if? They did that if they said, you know what, let's work together. I know. And they put their two teams together. I know. Like, could you imagine? It's so, but, but it's so, like, now? it's so just the way that, like, certain things go. Like, you need the rivalry for these people to get motivated to, to go search for all these That's fossils. True. Yep. So you kind of needed them to push each other a little bit to discover all that they did. And I mean, at the end of the day, they discovered a, cr- a ton. You know, they both spent a ton of cash on it and they discovered a lot. But yeah, like they, they got to a point where they probably could have worked together and then done did even more. Yeah. But that didn't work out. <laughs> you know I mean? wish though, <laughs> I so wish it's wild. that Marsh would have taken Cope up on the brain bet. Yeah. That Just been for neat. shits and gigs. That would have been neat. It's like, cool that we're doing a little kind of display about it too. Yeah, that's. Gonna I'm be very fun. excited about that. Yeah, we're creating like a little history piece on this part of time to kind of bring it forward a bit more. We're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of set it up, little history kind of cubicle piece. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll have that done pretty soon. That's sweet. Watch yourself when you're handling it. Try not to like. Oh scratch yeah, it's it gonna be like a little fragile because the the paint doesn't adhere very well. Oh, okay, so the paint might come off a little... Yeah, but as long as the feel's right, you know, as long as the feel is there... I don't know if spraying it with something would help, but it might... Yeah, this is because this is such a cool part of history. You know, the more I learn about this part of history and the rivalries that kind of get involved in this dinosaur fossil battle... I, I, I'm digging that it's, story. It's, it's wild, wild, man. Like to, the, to bring this forward and to kind and of the, and this put it up even that more. Like a so lot cool. of people don't know about paleontology is this side of things, mm-hmm. right? Like people. It think, seems like everybody just got along. You know, you would think about it, like, but it's not at all. The, it's like, not at all. When, one time I, when I went to Montana, <clears throat> I was talking to a paleontologist about Jack Horner. Yeah. Which is arguably top three paleontologists that people would know in the yeah, world sure, because yeah. of Jurassic Park. Yeah, sure, been doing it for a Park. while, Jurassic Park. 
right? He was consulted on Jurassic Park, which is why most people know him. Yeah. But the thing with Jack Horner is his PhD was granted to him yeah. uh, by the government because he's actually very severely dyslexic and he couldn't graduate university. Wow, cool. Um, so he was named a paleontologist because Sweet. of the work he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of paleontologists don't like Jack Horner because they say what he does is he'll keep his ears out for fines and stuff that happen, and then because he's got a big name, he can get a lot of funding, he can get a lot of notoriety for things, so then he basically steals people's shit. And it just comes, <laughs> it just comes back to people not being able to get along, and everybody yeah, just being all, together, being folks. all like, being all like grunt pants about it, like, like I want my I name and lights. Yeah, you know? I want to. But then you just sit and be all grump pants and don't be grump yeah. pants. Don't be grump pants don't be about grump it. Pants. Yeah, exactly right. So you can't be grump pants about it. And honestly, the best results always happen when we're trying to figure things out together. Anyway, so you know, grump pants ain't gonna get anybody anywhere. No, grump so pants leave get your, you nowhere. Leave your grump pants in your grump laundry basket and just get on with it. You know. Don't be grump pants. Yeah, don't be grump pants. <laughs> No, no. You just put on the friendly pants, work together, and leave your grump pants somewhere else. Nobody wants your grumpy pantness. Nope. No. So much better stuff comes out when we agree to work together. And coming from my mouth, that's... Yeah, grump pants. That's the thing. I don't, I don't <laughs> work very well with other people. I'll admit it. I, I grump pants. I'm not grump a grump pants. Pant. Grump pants. I don't. I. I just. I distrust. <laughs> I distrust. Yeah. I mean. I guess. And I'm there's a perfectionist. Yeah, and teamwork is hard. It is teamwork hard. is hard. That's group, why they make you do group, it in school. Group work is hard. Teamwork is hard. Most people don't like it. Uh-uh. Teamwork is tough. Group work is tough. Trying to discover things together is tough. Because especially if you're going for something new, like you're just sitting there, like whether you're looking up or you're looking down or you're trying to discover something new, you want to be the first person to discover see, that this thing. this is why... You want to get your name on it or you want to have Marsh like, and the discovery. So well together. You know, because... no, like, yeah, if you're discovering things as a team and like one guy finds it, it's like, I, I found it. I found it. I discovered it, you know. But like if you're a team, then it's a team thing and you know. But, yeah. Discovery is always interesting. And you like want that. to name that dinosaur. That's too, exactly right? it. Or that star or whatever. Whatever. You, yeah. Whatever you discover. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the part of just trying to discover new shit, new stuff, new ways to do things. But if they would have worked together, man, because Cope was. <laughs> but it's the discovery. They all want the discovery. But Cope was right? like I a, found a, it. I a found field it. guy. It's my discovery. No, Cope was a field guy, right? Like yeah. he liked to go out into the field and, and prospect. And then Marsh cool. was more of a, a like a, a lab office type of dude. Okay, like he yeah, liked yeah. To behind be, the scenes more. He liked to be in a controlled laddie. environment. Okay, yeah. So like, if you had someone like Cope go out and try and find shit, and yeah. then send his shit back to Marsh, and Marsh could analyze it and be like, no. Fair. But no. Had to be a pissing contest. <sighs> yeah. It doesn't even matter, like, if it's, you know, males, females, monkeys. It's all a pissing contest half the time. It's true because there's so many, like, disagreements on things. You don't hear... It's odd. You don't hear that as it's much It's like the animal kingdom. Women, you which pro- is bizarre. It probably happens so much with, like, giraffes and you don't even know. They just the giraffes are out there arguing about things and you don't even know about it. Have you ever seen giraffe fights where they swing their necks? Oh and yeah, shit? some giraffes get pretty wild. Can you too. imagine brachiosaurs doing that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd be okay because I got this sick helmet on. Did you know that the Plotticus could apparently break the sound barrier with its tail? Oh, because the the whip. The whip. Yeah, because it had like this really, really long tail and it got really thin. Just by the, the end. tip of the whip, by it was moving so quick. That's moving quick, man. Yeah. 
I, I I have a hard time with that one, but I don't know. I it's, it's a theory. And study it as much, so it's it a broke the sound barrier with its tail. Yeah, it could whip it. Apparently, <clears throat> according to some scientists, it whip it good. Whip it good. Break the sound barrier, baby. Wow. Do you have any cool personal discovery stories of things you've maybe discovered um, that you thought were cool while you're living this life? We had this discussion. Discoveries. I, just, I discover new things every day. Yeah. Oh no, I solve mysteries every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discoveries like, is different. Have I discovered like, something? Like discovery something. Did you? Uh, you've discovered a few fossils. Yeah. That's nothing, pretty cool. Yeah, nothing like groundbreaking. But yeah, but you've discovered some fossils. I don't fossils. have to look for them. You've discovered some fossils. You found I have. some. Yeah. That's cool. I have. So you have discovered that. I have. <clears throat> yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. I hacked at Egg Mountain. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you know, it wasn't Egg Mountain. It was a different <laughs> site. Cool. Uh, Egg Mountain? Egg Mountain. Where's Egg Mountain? Egg Mountain's in Montana. Egg Mountain. A-T-O-A-N-A-B-A-N-A-S. Uh, depends on who you ask. Montana Banana. But it's credited to Jack Horner. Okay. Um, as the discoverer. Hmm. Uh, it... I want to get this wrong. I think it was the first egg site that contained embryos because Jack Horner was also very uh, revolutionary in using modern technology such as CT scanning and x-rays and all that jazz on fossils because he likes to cut into them. Yeah. Because to get certain things, you'd have to cut into a fossil. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Um, for sure, yeah. And a lot of scientists don't like that because they're like, oh my god, you're you're destroying things. Fair, yeah, But yeah, Jack yeah. Horner was like, well, <laughs> we can learn more by cutting into these things oh. and looking at things like... Good idea. The, the structure of bone and yeah. the... But I can see the other side to that. You yeah. don't want to disturb it. You don't want to... You want to just leave it as it's found. That's what's good now. But then you want to learn more, right? So there's a balance there. And that's what's good now about how far technology has come because now we don't have to cut into fossils. Oh, you can scan stuff. You can scan it all the way through the phone. Scan all the stuff. And then that can, in turn, be processed into a computer and it can make three dimensional models in the computer. Nice. And that's how we get things like. the resonating chambers of fair, 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 yeah. uh, hadrosaurs and stuff like that. That's so cool. That's and that's so how cool. we know like what they could sound like. Yeah, I know all the right. all the ways they can do scans and X rays and I just, stuff. I just I I, like, oh, I went on a tangent. Dude, sometimes. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love learning about all this stuff and like my knowledge is average at best on like you know subjects as far as fossils go and like i i'm a pretty average knowledge or i'm not in the higher tier of it and you know a lot more about that so i think it's, i'm somewhere in the middle yeah so you know that's pretty cool man that's middle cool. to upper i i'm uh i enjoy history and I enjoy things that happened that I didn't know about. Like, like just the learning about some things that happened that I didn't even know. Like, I, it's just crazy, some of the stories. You know, history is, is a long, vivid path of this, that, and the other thing. But I think rivalry and discovery, you know, go hand in hand. It's true. You know, <clears throat> without rivalry, you don't have discovery. Well, like, you, you said it perfectly, you know, how it... Like what we were talking about, Copa Marsh, how it pushed it. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. They pushed each other to. Yeah. Like, go out you, no, that's not right. Or, things. yeah, no, I can find something better. Or I can do it better. I can do it bigger. I can do it. So, you, I think you have to have the rivalry mm-hmm. in order to have new discovery. And then, in order to push whatever field you're in, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of got to have. You can't have everybody getting sports along all the like time. That too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, sports yeah. is good. It's healthy. It's a fun competition, right? You can't have everybody getting along all the time. I mean, it, it doesn't work, really. Well, like, how many times do you yeah. hear like a sports team that's like, I guess, naturally stronger than a lot of teams because of their players, 
And so they yeah. kind of like half-ass things. They're not trying as hard. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this team out of nowhere mm -hmm. just starts tearing them down. And yeah. then that's when they have to push themselves to be even better. Right? Yeah, and I mean, I think that's what, you know, ultimately kind of pushes the future forward and changes things, you know. It's like the endless kind of rivalries, competitions, and, you know, different ways of, I don't know, discovering stuff, you know. Discovery is cool, and if we don't keep, you know, challenging each other in weird ways, like, you, nothing will kind of move forward a bit, you know? You know... That's what's cool about it. The next people that you should look into, if you thought that Kobe The Marks next really people? Cool. I'm just... I'm on these people. Okay, I won't tell you yet, then. Oh, you're going to leave me cliffhanging for that? Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. But yeah, I, I'm just... I'm learning about this story, about how they were... I had blown up fossils and stuff. It's wild. I know. That that blew my mind too. Yeah. Ha. Or like <laughs> how like uh oh I don't know if you heard this one, but Cope hired some dudes to help him with one of his digs, but those dudes actually worked for Marsh and he sent them out to hmm. I think I might have heard some of them. Yeah, to get like... Oh, is that like an inside thing? Yeah, to get, get some like sneaky attention. info? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's actually a book. Well, that's it's, cool. It's fictional. Uh, <clears throat> by Michael Crichton. It was like, yo, go get some information on this. Yeah, or like steal stuff. Right? Oh, that yeah. That happened a lot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's there's cool. a book by Michael Crichton. And I say that like because... He half wrote it before uh, he died, and okay. then his son kind of finished yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called Dragon Teeth. <laughs> cool. And it's it's based on the Bone Wars. Yeah. And so the novel is all about this dude. It's like the Wild West kind of thing. And he's like searching, hunting for fossils. Mm -hmm. And there's like gangs and like Indians, because that's what they called them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's a good book. That's sweet. That's sweet. That's really cool. Man, I love it. I love, you know, reading all these wacky stories and, like, every day is, you know, you're living in a time where we're always evolving what we know, right? But to look back on the history and these stories, like, I don't know how we got here, you know? Yep. So, history is wild, man. It's crazy. I hope you all were entertained <clears throat> by my yeah, jab, dude. gab, kiss. <clears throat> jab, gab. Absolutely, man. I love Jab and Gab. I love dinosaurs. I love fossils, and I and I love that we're doing a little display. We're gonna have I'm it so in a sci art competition. Yeah. Which is gonna be cool. There's this competition going on locally. Um, you can enter science projects. Science and art. Um, it's a science and art competition, and um, a lot of cool local people are gonna be putting in some stuff, and um, yeah, it should be good. The final year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you never know. A lot of things sometimes say the final year. And then Maybe we'll again. take over. And, uh, I mean, hey, who knows? Yeah, I mean, uh, it could be one of those things where it just has to be kept going by someone else. So, hey, man, yeah, whatever whatever happens, happens. You don't know. You know. Easier things have happened. Yeah, that's kind of it, you know, and, and all the cool things try to keep going. So, if, uh, if, you know, put our heads together, we get a few people helping out, it might be something that we could do. For sure. That'd be sweet. And trying to put our heads together. Oh. Yes. Put your heads together. You gotta put your heads together. Make it a little bit better. And if it's crappy weather, then you can put still put on a raincoat and you'll be alright. You probably won't melt because it's just rain and maybe a little snow and just grab a shovel and... And I think it's time to go. <clears throat> what, um, oh, one last oh, thing. It's not done. No, not done. I got one more thing. All right. In the, in the realm of, like, frozenness for, like, fossils, like, stuff that was found, like, frozen, you know, kind of on the cusp of it. Like, I, I'm not very well versed on, like, frozen fossils or that side of it. Like, what's, like, what's been the, like, you know, you think of fossils, um, just, the, like, mountains and kind of dirt and whatever, but like when you got the whole frozen aspect of it, so like the whole frozen like and ice, ice age stuff. Yeah, man, like so, that whole thing. What's your vibes on that? It's fucking cool. I'm saying fuck. <clears throat> I haven't said hey, it man. at all. So you can you can say that it's cool. So there it's is extremely cool. 
a place in California, of all places, you yeah. wouldn't think, called yeah. the La Brea Tar Pits. Cool. And it's not fossils that come out of here. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's skin and bones. Yeah. Because of the way the tar and ice preserved these animals over time. So the latest thing that I saw that came out of there, and I don't know if anything else has come out, but recently was uh, a wolf pup, like a dire wolf pup. Whoa! And like this, it looks like it's sleeping. Like, That's it's, so crazy. It's like fur and everything is still on Whoa. it. Like it, it just looks like it's like this. And it's, yeah. it's wild. The, like it's the, Just frozen, they just found it. Yeah, and like the mastodons and the mammoths <clears> that <throat> come out of there and like yeah. the saber tooth cats and the Do all that jazz. Do you think how uh, like a lot of these places are maybe becoming a bit more accessible because we're clearly losing some ice? Do you think that'll lead to more discoveries? What's your take maybe. on that? Yeah, because there's uh, more people now searching in the Arctic for dinosaurs and other creatures mm. that I would imagine maybe, A, you wouldn't have been able to get to before. That's what I'm saying. It's or, becoming like weird in a way that it's more accessible. Yeah. There's less ice. Yeah, more like of the that ice stuff is melting, can, so yeah. everything's going down. Right? Yeah, we're kind of going that way, yeah. Because... You, you talk to scientists in this field and a lot of them would rather natural erosion happen. Okay. Because if you just, as we discovered, go in and blow shit up. You can't, yeah. You know, like you, you kinda destroy need a, things. You kind of need a plan. Right. If you blow shit up without having a plan, then... That's yeah. why, like, it's funny. There's, uh, there's a lot it. of stories to uh, not so much in the arctic but kind of in the badlands area where erosion will happen and then you'll see like a, a piece of say a hip bone or something yeah, sticking yeah, out yeah. the side of a, a mm -hmm. bluff and it'll be on this like 50 foot cliff that you could blow up the top of it and get to it yeah but you would probably end up destroying things. So scientists will literally have to wait and watch for like a year or mm. two years while nature just naturally erodes. Yeah. And that's why paleontologists get really excited over rainstorms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of clears it all. It's all of the crap out. And I think like same thing with a little bit of ice melt is that it's clearing up some new areas. Yeah. <clears throat> and as much as people... You know, it's hard to say that the ice melting is exciting, but I think from certain perspectives to be able to, to search in different areas that maybe weren't accessible before, it can be kind of cool. There's good in spite, with everything. Yeah, in spite of the bigger picture that it might not be the best thing going on, um, there could be some positives and some discoveries maybe yeah. um, that might be found. So I don't know. Like, yeah, there's good and bad and everything. Um, you know, the world is heading in that direction and, uh, yeah, there'll probably be some more new awesome discoveries, uh, be obviously less ice. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be able to spread themselves out and see what but we can find. It's important to remember that a lot of the discoveries that we hear about, like, let's just say recently, you know, like, I think the biggest thing that's come out recently <clears throat> is the big ichthyosaur that yeah. was discovered in, in the UK. Yeah. Um, like a lot of these things, with the exception of that one, are discovered because people are looking at collections. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, fair. you know, we, we talk about the positives that come out of the negatives, and that has, I think, come out of COVID, where we haven't been able to go out to the field. So what do you do? Wow. Yeah, there's been a lot of time You look at time all the to... shit that's in the drawers. Right? Yeah, there's been a lot of time to sort the drawers for Yeah, sure. so that's where all these new species are getting named from. Because mm -hmm. we've been like, sorting the oh, drawers. we haven't looked through here. Let, let's analyze this. Yeah, right? analyzing, sorting the drawers kind of. So the expeditions that are happening now going out into these Arctic areas and yeah, stuff like yeah, that, yeah. we might not see what comes out of that for another 10 years that's true because they got to get it all and take it and sample it, analyze it break it's a lot it all of work. up 
And especially if you're finding huge pieces, big things, they don't want to break them apart. So you're trying to get big stuff out of, you know, with limited resources and supplies. And yeah, you got a couple they copters. Use that now. We don't have to use horses anymore, thankfully. I don't yeah. know how they did that. Horses, yeah, that's the way they used to move them around, you know, like, horses and buggies. Can you imagine hauling, <laughs> like when I say a thousand pounds, like I'm not over exaggerating because yeah, you man. think you have, first of all, solid rock. Yeah. Covered in plaster, mm -hmm. hardened plaster. Mm -hmm. It's gonna weigh a thousand pounds. It's, they're huge. They're massive. So, yeah. And like you know, you have a leg bone the size of a bus. Yep. Yeah. They hauled us out with horses through the Badlands. I know. I know, man. It's wild. It is wild. I feel like this one's probably like an hour long because I jab my jaws. I don't know. We we went mining. We went mining there. We did some discoveries, and we took our own little mining tour. But I, I want to uh, learn more about it. And yeah, it was super fun to talk about dinosaur fossils, mining, and everything that comes out of the ground and that's part of history. Look at the ground. It's a cool place. Yeah, it is. It's pretty neat. It's well, strange, but you can always discover something and sometimes you don't even have to look very far. It's true. Yeah, it could be right in front of you. Anyways, your drink is empty. It is. I can't do the elevator this time. No, nah, let's just walk out. I sideways. broke my knee last time. We came in this way, so we're going to walk out that way. Cheers. Thank you for coming out. Oh, yeah, you can flip this. I want. I want. I want. No. No. I'm going to keep mine. Yeah. I'm going to keep mine like that. I went all that way to just keep it the same. No, <laughs> I'm going to make my flash colors. Bye. Bye.